What's up, TE Church? Good to see you guys. Welcome to week four of At the Movies. And if you haven't figured it out yet what movie we're talking about today, I thought it would be fun to kind of go back, kind of rewind back to when the movie was being made. And I had the opportunity to uh, kind of be there. And I want to give you some behind the scene looks. Now, these picks didn't make the final cut, but take a look. Yeah, so that was when I was hanging out with uh, Robert Shaw, who was the captain. It was awesome. There's Linda and I. That was a great scene, wasn't it, honey, when we were there, just kind of watching out. I think we have a few more. Let's see. Yeah, that was scary, but it was awesome when the uh, shark was ready to take down the boat. Man, I was on a balance. There, there's another great, great shot. That's after we'd actually taken the shark out. We're swimming back. And yeah, we're showing our scars. That's me and Hooper. And I'm showing him really no scar. <laughs> I'm just showing him what uh, my forearm looks like. And w I wish it looked bigger in that picture, but it doesn't. So that's it. That was a behind the scenes. So the movie we're talking about, one of my favorite movies of all time, a movie that totally messed my life up for years, the 1975 classic, Jaws. And I'll tell you, when I say it messed me up, man, it messed me up. After I saw that movie in the summer of 75, I wouldn't go near the water. In fact, I didn't get in a bathtub for three months. I was convinced everywhere there was water, there were sharks. And I was just like, so messed up by that. I don't know, as anyone else, did it mess you up when you saw a show of hands? It just kind of like, man, your ocean experience has never been the same. So now when you're in the water, you're always looking around, you're never comfortable, you're always nervous. And I know I thought I finally kind of got over this fear. And Linda and I and the girls were at the ocean, I think it was five years ago. And we're out there about waist time. We're splashing around doing our thing. We're having a great time. And listen, if I'm lying, I'm dying. There's a girl beside me. I have no idea who it was. Her eyes get big. She points. Shark! Now listen, at this point, I wish I could tell you I was a great father <laughs> and a great husband. I wish I could tell you I escorted my kids first. I went back and I got Linda, escorted them safely to shore. Heck to the no. I trampled my kids, I trampled my wife to get to the shore because I thought this isn't how it's going to end for me. There's no way it's going to end this way. And uh, man, so here's the point. As your pastor, I'm going to be there for you spiritually, but when it comes to sharks, you're on your own. <laughs> the movie messed me up. And listen, if you're getting ready to go to the beach, I have bad news. If you've already been there, you don't have to worry about it. But... People were in the water. They say, we're fine. Oh, no. There are sharks in the water. And just because you don't see them doesn't mean that they're not there. In fact, really, life is about swimming with a pack of predators, isn't it? Man, there are sharks all around. Maybe you work with some sharks. Maybe you go to school with some sharks. Maybe you have some friends, so-called friends. Man, you found out. They were sharks. Maybe you're married to a shark. There are sharks all around. And Jesus found this out when he was ready to start his ministry. Man, there are sharks all around. Let's take a look. We're going to be in the book of Matthew today. If you have a Bible, open it up. It's in the New Testament. If you don't, the text will be on the screen beside me. And just to set this up, Jesus is getting ready to start his ministry. And it's a really exciting time for him. He'd waited 30 years for this, and now things are ready to begin to unfold. The prophecies are ready to start happening. And here's what it says in Matthew 3, verses 16 and 17. And after being baptized, Jesus went up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and coming upon him. And behold, a voice out of the heavens saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well Please, man, you would think that everything is going perfectly for Jesus. This is it. This is what he's been waiting for. But fast forward just a couple verses, chapter 4, verse 1. But then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted 
by the devil. I want to show you today that as soon as you have an incredible spiritual experience, as soon as you try to get your life going in a new direction, as soon as you decide, man, I don't want to live the old life anymore, I want to live a new life, I believe God's got something better for me, man, get ready because the sharks are swarming. As soon as you decide that things are going to be different, man, it took Jesus three verses, and who showed up? The devil shows up. The sharks are swarming. And just because you're not in the water doesn't mean there aren't sharks. Some of you are like, what do you mean, Tim? There's sharks? Oh, sharks are all around. Let me talk about some different types of sharks maybe you've had to deal with or will have to deal with. I want to start off with one of my favorites, the bull shark. Do you know any bull sharks? People that are full of bull. <laughs> bull sharks are everywhere, aren't they? Bull sharks. Bull sharks are people that overpromise and underdeliver. They say one thing and mean another. They tell you, man, I've got your back. I'm there for you. You can count on me. Man, if you, don't, if, if you can worry about it, a lot of things, but you, you don't have to worry about me. Man, I'm going to be there for you. And as soon as you need them the most, man, they take a bite and then they swim away. Bull sharks. Do you know any bull sharks? People you thought you could count on? People that said, I've got your back. You're the best. Man, there are bull sharks even in church. True story. When we first moved into this building, we had a family come up to Linda and I after church and they said, pastors, can we talk to you? Oh my gosh. And I should have known when they said this. Out of all of the churches, we've been to 20 different churches. Out of all of the churches, oh my gosh, this is the best. We love it here. Oh, this church is incredible. Thank you. We can't wait to see what God does in this church. It's the last time I saw them. One week, and they were, boom, swimming away. Bull sharks. Be aware of bull sharks. Jesus had to deal with some bull sharks. Even his disciples, when he needed them the most, man, they were asleep. Do you know any bull sharks? How about this? Lemon sharks. Do you know any lemon sharks? Lemon, man. Sour, negative, complaining, never enough. Lemon sharks are swimming around everywhere. Pessimistic, always criticizing. It doesn't matter what you do. It's not the right thing. There are always lemon sharks swimming around us. Again, Jesus dealt with some lemon sharks, mostly from the religious people in his life. They were always complaining, always criticizing. There will be people that will criticize. As soon as you say, man, I've got a dream. God wants to do something in me and through me. Be ready because the lemon sharks will swarm. Building hope? What are you talking about? No way, man. Lemon sharks. It's never going to happen. Always complaining. The music's too loud. The music's too soft. Well, we never hear that, but... Lemon shark. You shouldn't have fun in church, man. Church should be just lemon sharks. They're everywhere. Do you know any lemon sharks? How about this? This is one of my favorite, the nurse shark. The bottom-feeding, bottle-sucking babies of the deep. Nurse sharks. What's a nurse shark? Man, nurse sharks are people that are constantly needing validation. They're needy. They're always in drama and trauma, always in crisis, nurse sharks. And it doesn't matter what you do for them, it's never enough. And they always need more. And you're trying to always help them. And you're, you're trying to rescue them. Do you know any nurse sharks? Man, they'll just drain the life out of you. Nurse sharks, they're swimming around everywhere. In our church, one of our core values is growing. We believe that God wants you off of the bottle and onto solid food, that he doesn't want you to stay a baby. He wants you to grow into spiritual maturity. Man, be careful that you don't surround yourself with nurse sharks. How about this? The mighty hammerhead. Hammerhead sharks. Stubborn. Can't tell them anything. They know it all defensive, 
Wives, stop elbowing your husbands. You're in public. <laughs> let, me, let me help you. You're in public, y'all. Don't. <laughs> He's talking. Against change, they, they've just got it all, all figured out. They, they don't want to see you progress, to move forward. And I just want to tell you, there will be hammerheads in your life when you decide that you want to get your life together and get authentic and get real about following Jesus, hammerhead sharks aren't willing to go where God wants you to go. So instead of helping you get there, they're going to want to hold you back. There will be people that just don't want to see you go to where God wants you to go, to see life change happen. So in, in, in other words, they're going, to, they're going to try to keep you where they are because they don't want to go where you're going. Hammerhead sharks, man, they're swimming all around against change. We like it the way it was. Don't change anything. And then there's the mighty tiger shark. Oh, man, tiger sharks are crazy, aren't they? It's true. Tiger sharks are crazy. I want to read some things they found inside the belly of tiger sharks. Check this out. Rubber boots, bags of charcoal, boat cushions, hubcaps, Pets, prayerfully cats, raincoats, <laughs> raincoats, handbags, cow's hooves, what? Deer antlers, lobster, sneakers with legs attached. Wow. Tiger sharks, they're crazy. Do you know any crazy tiger sharks? Man, people that are erratic that they just fly off the handle, bad temper. Man, you just don't know. You can't tell what they're going to do. One minute, they're fine. Next minute, wham! They're just like off the deep end. Crazy tiger sharks. And the thing about a tiger shark is they don't want to swim alone. They don't want to swim alone. Tiger sharks make bad decisions, and they operate in the law of attraction. See, you don't attract what you want. You attract who you are. And if you're swimming with some crazy tiger shark people, don't be surprised if you do some crazy things. Oh man, there, I'm sure there's some tiger sharks at Jamboree in the Hills this week. Wow, I bet they're swimming everywhere out there. Now, I have nothing against Jamboree in the Hills. I was out there for 20 years doing my thing on the stage. But I just was, was thinking like, if you put yourself in a position to fail, don't be surprised when you do. Like tiger sharks are swimming around, ready to take a bite out of you. And last but not least, there's the mighty great white. The movie Jaws, based off of the great white, the monster of the midway. What's the deal with the great white? Man, they are on the ride of pride, aren't they? They are at the top of the food chain. They have giant egos. Great white people, man, they're always one-uppers. Doesn't matter what you've done, they're gonna one-up. Name droppers. Great white, let me give you an example. I could literally say, if I'm with a great white person, I could literally say, wow, let's see, man, last week it was pretty cool. The Pope called me up and asked me to have lunch. Great white person, oh really? Well, Jesus was at my house last night, and he had Moses and Abraham, so. <laughs> that, you know, people like that, doesn't matter what you've done, you could get a great job, you could get a raise, you don't want to say it around a great white person, because they're going to make you feel small, because they want to feel large. These are just some people that we want to be aware of, and believe it or not, all of these sharks, man, they can kill you. All of these sharks can take you down. So, are you looking for sharks? Are you good at identifying sharks? Because sharks are swimming around us all of the time. They're there. So, what I want to do in the time that we have left, I want to look at just a few things that you need to know about sharks so that you can be safe while the sharks are around. And I want to... Start with three scriptures. All of these are in the New Testament. Hebrews 9.22 says this. 
In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with what? With blood. And without the shedding of what? Blood. There is no forgiveness. Colossians 1.20. God was also pleased to bring everything on earth and in heaven back to himself through Christ. He did this by making peace through Christ's blood sacrificed on the cross. 1 John 1.7. But if we are living in the light, as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. In other words, God's not mad at us. We're, we're connected now with God. We're in fellowship with God. And the what of Jesus? Blood, Blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Listen, if you're operating in sync with Jesus, if you're walking with Jesus, if you have a relationship with with Jesus, if you're trusting in him, you are covered by the blood of Jesus. You are covered with the blood. It's his sacrifice, it's what he did, but it's his blood that makes us in good standing with God. So if you're on your way to heaven, it's because of the blood of Jesus. And if you're going to go to heaven, let's just say you're on your way and you're there and there's God meeting you, and God says, hey, like, what right do you have to come into my palace of paradise? Your answer has to be, I'm covered in the blood. Are you with me? Here's the first point that I want to make. If you're covered in blood, sharks will show up. Sharks can smell blood one drop, one mile away. And I want to tell you, if you're covered in the blood, if you're walking with Jesus, man, the enemy can smell you coming miles and miles away. And there are people that go, oh, I thought when I started to follow Jesus, my life was going to be fine. It was going to be perfect. I wasn't going to have any issues. Oh, no. Man, it's the opposite because before you were no threat to the devil. You were no threat to the kingdom of darkness. But now you've been filled with the light of life and you, God's called you to be a world changer. He's destined you for greatness. He wants to do something in you and through you. And man, when there's blood on you, get ready because the sharks will swarm. And the devil, listen, your enemy does not show up with pointy horns, a red cape, and a pitchfork. He comes disguised as everything you've ever wished for. And temptation will walk through every door you're not willing to close. Temptation will come through every door that you leave open. So get ready, because if you're not closing some doors, man, the sharks are going to swim through, and don't be surprised if we get bit. So we've decided that sharks will be around blood. We've got blood, so what do we do? Well, let's look at the professionals. What do the professional divers do to protect themselves from sharks? Well, they have this shark suit, right? Maybe you've seen it. I think we have a picture. There's a guy that's diving. He's got the anti shark suit on. He is protected. I like he's got a GoPro on his head. He wants to make sure he captures everything that's happening. But he's got the anti-shark suit. So what about us as Christians? What do we have? Do we have anything that will protect us? Yeah, we've got the anti-shark suit, but what we call it is the armor of God. We've got the full armor of God that we can put on that will protect us against the attacks of the enemy. Let's look what it says in Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18. It said, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Then it says this, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Then it says this, therefore... Put on every piece, everyone say every piece, every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. It doesn't say there won't be a battle. It just says you'll still be standing firm after the battle 
Stand your ground, putting on, here we go, the belt of truth. That's part of the anti-shark suit. The body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on the salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. If you're not putting on the entire shark suit, don't be surprised if you get bit. Put on the full armor. Put on the entire shark suit. James 4, 7. So humble yourselves before God. He said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Resist the devil and he will flee. Listen, don't let your guard down because as soon as you think that it can't happen to you is when it can happen to you. Resist the devil and he will flee. First point, if you're covered in blood, sharks will show up. Here's the second point. Small sharks grow into big sharks. Oh man, it's just a small shark. You don't have to worry about it. It's a small shark. It's not going to hurt you. It's just a small problem. It's no big deal. Just let's sweep it under the rug. It'll go away. Small problem. It's a small issue. Small sharks grow into big sharks. Small problems left unattended grow into big problems. We have to deal with the situation that we're faced with because if we don't, it's not going to stay a small problem. It's going to become a large problem. Let me give you an example. It's Friday night and you're in high school. And what do you do when you're in high school on Friday night? Man, there's a party. We're going to the party. What do you do at the party? Man, we're just drinking a few beers and uh, smoking some weed. It's no big deal. It's what you do in high school, right? It's just a party. Well, let's fast forward. It was a small shark, and now you're 30 years old, and now it's a few more beers, and you're still smoking weed, and the shark's starting to grow. And if you're not careful... You're going to be 50 years old. You're going to look at your life and you're going to say, how did I get here? What, what happened to me? How did I get here? Well, I can tell you what happened. You didn't deal with the small shark. And now it's a bigger shark that's ready to take a bite out of your life. And it will destroy you if you don't deal with it. Small sharks. What's your small shark? Let me go through a few and tell me if anyone can identify with these sharks. There's people in here, your small shark right now is unforgiveness. Someone has hurt you. Someone has done something to you. You've experienced something in your life, and it's not good. It's, uh, it's difficult, and it's hurt your heart. But what you're doing is you're focusing on that unforgiveness, and you're not dealing with it, and, and you're ticked off, and you were ticked off six months ago, and the truth is you're, you're still ticked off today, and if you don't deal with unforgiveness now, unforgiveness will grow and grow and grow, and it will swallow you whole, and it will mess you up, and that's why God said, listen, you got to get rid of, I can't forgive you, he said, until you forgive the people that you're holding a grudge against. Unforgiveness, are you holding on to, oh, it's a small shark, deal with it. Listen, ask God. There's people here today, you, you're like, I can't do it, Pastor. I've tried. Here's what I want you to do today. Go to God and say, listen, I've struggled with this. Man, I, it's a, somebody in my family or somebody that I worked with, somebody that betrayed me. Listen, I've been there. You can't do it on your own. But I want you to know that there's a great God that no matter what you're going through, come on, he's bigger than the problem that you're dealing with. <laughs> ask. Ask. Don't put it off because what you deny, you delay. What you face, you conquer. What you deny, you delay. Man, I'm just not going to deal with it right now. I'm going to sweep it under the rug. Unforgiveness. What about abuse? Maybe there's people here and when you were younger, something happened to you that should have never happened to you. That someone crossed a line with you. 
And man, it's been trauma. And you've just like said, I'm not going to deal with this. I don't want to think about it. It's out of sight. It's out of mind. I don't want to talk about it. And, and I want to tell you, it's not going to go away. And you need to deal with it. A small problem is going to grow into a large problem. And, and these are things in life. Listen, bad things happen. It's just life. And, and I want to encourage you, if that's you today, come on, it's, it's not too late for God to start to heal your heart. That God can take what's broken. Come on, how many of you know that God takes what's broken and he puts it back together? That's who he is. That's what he does. But you got to give it to him. And God can heal what you won't reveal. So, so quit being ashamed and the, the, the enemy has you thinking that there's no hope for you. Man, God is bigger than your problem. For others in here, maybe your small shark is drugs and alcohol. And at one, one point, you're like, I can handle it, man, I got this. And I just do it because, man, it's, it's the weekend, and I, I like to have some fun. And I, again, I, I'm not the person that says, don't have a beer. I just don't see that in Scripture. But I do see very clearly that it says, don't get drunk. And it's not because God doesn't want to see you drunk. It's because it leads to debauchery. In other words, it'll mess your life up. It'll mess your family up. It'll mess your job up. And I just, just here's, here's a litmus test. Maybe you're here and you're like, I don't know if, like, am I sweeping this? Is this a shark for me? I have three questions I want you to honestly ask yourself so that you can see, is this an issue for you? The first is this. If you're lying to cover up your behavior, you have a shark that's out of control. If you have to lie. Here's the second. If you continue in spite of the obvious negative consequences, it's a shark. It's growing. What are you doing? Are you dealing with it? What you deny, you delay. Here's the last thing. If you make promises to stop that you can't keep, you have a shark that's out of control. So what do you do? Listen, you get help. And there is nothing wrong with asking for help. There is nothing wrong. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. Matthew 7, 7, Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. My prayer today is there are people here that you're going to take an honest look at yourself. You're going to assess your situation, and you're going to start knocking on, on, on heaven's door and say, Jesus, I need some help. I just don't want to be here five years from now. And if I don't address this small shark, it's going to get larger. Amen? Here's, here's another point. Don't swim alone. Don't swim alone. One way to avoid being attacked is you don't swim alone. You know, and it's funny, I see people all the time that think they can swim alone. Let, let's, let's look at the church for a minute. Take a look at this. Think about it. What is the church? Like, what is the church? The church is the body of Christ. Would you agree? The body of Christ. It's the bride of Christ. It's a place of community. It's a place where we are commanded as believers to go, a place of necessity. What is the church? Let me tell you what I think the church is. The church is a shark cage. It's a safe place where we can learn to swim together. The church is a shark cage. You know, if you go old school, there are people that call the church where we are right now a sanctuary. Maybe you've heard that term. You know what that word actually means? Safe place. A refuge. But for whatever reason, there are people, believers, that think, no man, I can swim alone. I don't need the church. Man, I'm good over here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go swim and, and I'm going to be fine. Would you agree that it would be stupid for me, for you, to go, I'm going to go swimming. Now, I know there's sharks out there. Man, there are sharks in the water. And I've got blood pouring out of my leg. I mean, I am bleeding profusely. But in spite of that, I think I'll go lay on a boogie board and look like a giant sea turtle. Would you agree that would be stupid? But that's what people do all the time. When you walk away from the church... 
What you're saying is, I'm wide open for attack because we've never been designed to swim alone. In fact, it says this in Hebrews 10, 25. We should not stop gathering together with other believers as some of you are doing. Now, of course, that's not you because you're here today. So would you give yourself a round of applause because you made a good decision to get in the house of God today. You could be anywhere doing anything, but you're here. <laughs> Instead, we must continue to encourage each other even more as we see the day of the Lord coming. Come on, let's be a church that just doesn't show up when we have to. Let's be a church that's committed to staying close and connected with other believers so that we can be better, so that we can be in a safe place. I want to read you something from a girl that had been away from church for quite a while and just came back last week and posted something on social media that I want to read to you today. She said, I've been through my worst times these last three months, fueled by all of the why me's and how could you's, what did I ever do so wrong? I doubted him. I claimed to be a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ and yet I felt I was getting back at him by not going to church physically wiped out by my illness, emotionally drained, financially struggling and questioning everything. If he truly loved me, then why is all this happening to me? My husband begged me to go back. Well done, husband. I'd tell him yes, just to pacify him. Then I'd wake up the next morning and change my mind. But today, I went back home. Nervous and embarrassed by my conditional love, but I was greeted with some of the absolute best hugs from some of the most wonderful people. Thank you, Angel, our executive director. Thank you, Beth Sicoli, our TE Kids director. Thank you, Pastors Tim and Linda, for our warm welcome. The Wades are finally home. Don't swim alone. The enemy will try to give you every reason why to swim alone. Listen, don't do it. Because when bad things happen and you're connected to the church, you're not swimming alone. When your kids are going rogue and you're connected to the church, you're not swimming alone. When sickness and disease and cancer shows up, come on, you're connected to the house, you're not swimming alone. Don't swim alone. Come on, somebody, listen to what I'm telling you. There's power in this place. It's a giant shark cage to protect you. Don't, you can sit down. Don't swim alone. So real quick, let's recap. Number one, if you're covered in blood, expect sharks to show up. They're coming. So what do we do? We put on the full armor of God. We put on the anti-shark suit to protect us in times of trouble. What's the second thing? Small sharks grow into large sharks. Take care of your problems today. Don't wait one more day. Take care of whatever it is that God's putting on your heart today. And last but not least, don't swim alone. I'm imploring, that's a great Bible word. I'm imploring you. Take one hour a week, one hour, listen. How great is our God that he is the creator and author of time. And he said, just give me an hour a week that you prioritize getting to this house, being part of community that will cheer you on, that will be here in times of trouble because you weren't designed to swim alone. We're better together. Come on, tell somebody beside you, we're better together. We're better together. Sharks are everywhere. They're swimming around. 
but we've got Jesus. Come on, and Jesus is greater than anything that could come against us. It doesn't matter what it is or what it looks like. We've got Jesus. Let's pray together and ask that you bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, thank you today.